This is the most self-indulgent project I've ever made. Cowboys versus dinosaurs in a traditional Stratego-style showdown. It's really cool, and it's just for me. I'm Adam Porter, I'm a game designer from Wales, and I like to discuss my experiences in the world of design on this channel. If you like what I do, please let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you may have noticed I gave myself a bit of a break in January after producing 12 videos in December. I needed it. But I didn't sit back during that month off. My brain doesn't really work that way. I got creative. So you've already seen some of the fruits of this labour. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you my educational card game for dental training, produced using print-on-demand service Launch Lab, who also sponsored this video. And last week, I introduced you to my board game designer journal, which is now on sale on Amazon. But this particular project, Dino West, was a real geek out. The great thing about a print-on-demand service like Launch Lab is that it lets you really indulge your creative impulses and make something which looks and feels like a professional game, even if it's just for you and you alone. So let me tell you how I came to make this homebrew board game. You may remember that last summer I recorded a deep dive into the history of Stratego and related games. Dover Patrol was my dad's favourite game as a kid, and we played it a lot when I was growing up. We then moved on to LATAC, Aviation, and Tri-Tactics, all variations on a similar system. Deploy your pieces secretly, then take turns to move and attack, removing your opponent's pieces if they're outranked. I also talked about related games like Swords and Wizardry and The Generals. But my research revealed that the precursor to all these games, Gunjin Shogi, appears to have originated from Japan, and one of the most popular and fascinating evolutions of the system is played all across China called Lutsan Chi, or Land Battle Chess. This was the starting point for Dino West. It's not as easy to get hold of copies of Gunjin Shogi or Lutsan Chi in the UK, and even if you do purchase a copy, as I did with Lutsan Chi, the heavy use of Chinese characters on the playing pieces makes the game all but unplayable for a Westerner. Now I wanted to make my own version, and present it in a way that might make it appealing to my friends or family. So the fantastic thing about these games is that they're in the public domain, so there's no copyright issues. And I have no intention of selling this game, it's just for my own use, so I felt very comfortable playing around with AI images for the illustration. Up to this point, I've tended to promote Launch Lab as a great option for creating prototypes to show to publishers, but it's fantastic for this stuff too. Individual, bespoke, homebrew games just for you and your family. Perfect for making a really creative, personalised gift. Now I'll put the website address on the screen so you know where to head if you fancy doing something similar. So Dino West is really two games in one. On one side of the board, I have a grid for Gunjin Shogi, not dissimilar to the board layout for Stratego or the TAC. But one awesome feature in Launch Lab is the ability to create a double-sided board. So Dino West has a different grid on the reverse of the board, designed for playing Lutsan Chi, the latter Chinese variant. You can see that Lutsan Chi has a fairly complex grid, with playing pieces able to move across the straight lines. Meaning, from some squares you can only move up, down, left and right, but for others you can also move diagonally. The ovals at the centre of the grid are safe spaces where you can't be attacked, and pieces can move any distance in a straight line if they're moving along the thicker line, representing a mountain path in my version of the game. Now, Gunjin Shogi is not really one game, but it's a whole family of public domain games which use the familiar mechanism made famous by Stratego. It's hard to find one consistent rule set for Gunjin Shogi. There are many different board sizes and layouts, and many different playing pieces with varying abilities. So I amalgamated several of the simpler rule sets to create a version of the game which uses exactly the same playing pieces as Lutsan Chi to keep my two-in-one homebrew game simple to set up and learn. Now I've rambled on about this very geeky project for ages now, and I haven't addressed the most striking thing about it, the ridiculous theme and illustration. I was tired of the military trappings of this whole genre of games. They all seem to focus on the World Wars or Napoleonic Wars, which I don't find all that appealing. I fancied going really fantastical and silly, so I opted for Dinosaurs vs Cowboys. 
I would be using AI for the illustration. It's really hard to get a consistent look with AI across multiple images, so I needed to pick a very distinctive style. Now I've always been a fan of pop art, especially the paintings of Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein, so I used pop art as a prompt for these images, aiming for pictures which could have appeared in a comic strip from the 50s or 60s. And the goal of both games is to capture your opponent's prize. The dinosaurs want to capture the cowboy's cattle, and the cowboys want the dino eggs. Alternatively, in Gunjin Shogi, you can win by moving your own prize into your opponent's base. On your turn, you move a piece, and if it's back to back in Gunjin Shogi, you can attack, revealing the pieces with the lower numbered piece, eliminating the higher number from the board. In Lutzan Chi, you do this by moving into the same space as an opposing piece. The volcanoes can't be moved, and if any piece attacks a volcano, both pieces are removed. The exception is the mounted cowboy or the pterodactyl, who are the only pieces which can survive the volcano, presumably by fleeing from the lava. These pieces can also move further than the others, so when travelling on the thicker lines in Lutzan Chi, these are the only pieces which can travel around corners. In Gunjin Shogi, they can move any distance in an uninterrupted vertical line, but only one space horizontally. The dynamite acts for the cowboys like a moving volcano, and likewise with the exploding berries for the dinosaurs. And one nice little twist in Gunjin Shogi is that the prizes, the cows or dino eggs, the equivalent of Stratego's flags, take on the rank of the playing piece position directly behind them. So this gives Gunjin Shogi a distinct feel in comparison to the more familiar games. Now both games are traditionally played with a third player as referee checking which pieces won whenever an attack occurs, but not revealing the values to the players. I've included this as a variant in my rulebook, because I can't see any of my friends sitting and watching a two-player game without taking part, so we'll largely be sticking to the Stratego-style game, where pieces are revealed to both players whenever an attack occurs. And talking of the rulebook, I'm so happy with this. Launch Lab products are such high quality, it feels just like purchasing a professionally published game. They've made it much simpler to produce the tokens too. I made a previous video where I went through the process of laying out a document for tokens, and it was pretty complex compared to the simple system for cards. A few months later though, the system is much simpler, at least for square tokens. There's no more messing around with layers and bleed and trim lines. Downloading a template from Launch Lab is super simple, and then you can just upload individual images for each token, just as you would for the cards. The tokens slot perfectly into the plastic bases. I was concerned they'd be tight and mark the tokens, but that's not the case at all. But they're not loose either, they're, they're just right. And as I highlighted in my previous video, you can select custom box sizes now, pretty much any size you like. But for this project, because it needed a game board, it made sense to just use one of the standard sizes, medium square, because that was the size of the folded board, so I knew it would fit. I feel a bit bad showing off this weird, geeky, but pretty awesome little game when none of you will ever get to play it. But the beauty of Launch Lab is that there's nothing stopping you from doing something similar. If you want to create a homebrew game just like this one, perhaps a personalised version of a traditional classic, or a reimagined version of an old favourite from your childhood, you can get great results using this service. Just visit launchtabletop.com and start creating. And don't forget to add the code Adam in Wales to get a 20% discount. And if you'd like to know more about producing games with Launch Lab, watch this video next.